Hey guys, Steve here. Well, I've got another product to show you today, and uh, it's something I've been using for a while, but uh, we'll get that intro out of the road, and uh, then we'll get into it, eh? Okay guys, as you would have seen in the intro I said I've got a new product I want to show you. Now it's a product I have been using for a, a lot of years now and this product was originally made by Rhett Thompson. I'm just reading this off my phone because um, I just thought I'd share this with you. And he wanted to make an outdoors cooking easy and effective. And he had a bit of an engineering uh, background and he designed this Ozpit. And that's what I'm going to show you. The Ozpit. Um, Unfortunately, Rhett passed away in 2017. He was only 58 years of age. But um, the company was taken over by another Australian company and it's wholly Australian owned. So it's an Aussie, Aussie product supporting Aussie jobs. And um, they still have Rhett's um, original uh, dreams and wishes and uh, they want to continue to bring a great system that is enjoyable to everyone. And I've got a new product that I just bought off them. and. Um, Looking forward to showing you that, but I thought I'll go through the uh, Ospit and show you all about it. Guys, this is what I want to show you today. It's uh, my Ospit. Now I've had this for a while, and uh, we sort of take it with us. It's in our camper all the time, and uh, fits in a nice little spot in the back there. But uh, it's a terrific product. I used it last weekend, and uh, we cooked up a roast chicken on the um, over the fire pit here, and. Uh, Put a few photos up on uh, Facebook and Instagram and things like that and everyone was asking me about it so thought I might do a little bit of a video about it because I, I actually ordered a new um, product for it uh, as an, another bit of gear they have for it and it turned up this week so thought I'd show you that and we'll do a bit of cook up at the end and uh, give you a look at it so um, we'll get into it now and um, I'll show you all about it. First off um, not sure of the exact weight I'll, I'll have a look and um, I'll put a bit of a picture just up right there at the end of my finger but uh, it's not real heavy um, 8 to 12 kilo maybe but uh, it, it's pretty compact like you can see the bag it's like a polyester uh, not canvas it's like a you know sort of bag you'd buy like uh, to put your clothes in and things like that um, suitcases made out of things like that it's got a little hard um, cardboard sort of insert on the inside of it there and um, it's served us well like I've had it sitting in the back of my camper and we've traveled all over the countryside with it and it hasn't torn or rip or anything like that it does have a handle inside here too so if you want to put a handle and put it over your arm but uh, let's open it up and uh, give you a look okay this is the first bit I want to show you. Now this is the uh, motor unit that goes on the spindle. The spindle goes into there and um, drives the rotisserie. So quite compact, stainless steel, um, little on off switch there. You can see the, the spindle turning around. Now it runs off two double D size batteries just in there and um, they last a long time like I would have done probably five or six cook-ups with those batteries and they run anywhere from you know this it'll run anywhere from like an hour to two hours two hours on the weekend when I done the roast chook over there over the um, coal so and they're still going so gonna use it again today and uh, or maybe not this um, I'm gonna use the other product I've got that I've ordered but uh, I'll show you that in a minute so like I said it also has there a little uh, socket for to plug it into a, maybe a transformer and plug it into 240 volts so that if you're using it at home um, I've never worried about that because the batteries last a long time so um, just carry a spare set with you when you go camping and um, you'll never have any trouble with it so that's the motor unit one thing just to remember when you put that in the bag make sure you take the batteries out um, or one of them out because you can bump the little on off switch turn on drives while you're driving and they'll be flat they will be flat okay we'll get the most important part out or not the most important part but the part you probably need first now this is the um, peg 
for holding up the rotisserie and holding the drive motor and everything else. It's quite solid, it's probably the heaviest part of the whole thing. Um, it's got a little spike on the bottom there, so, and you just drive this in to the ground. So we'll do that now and uh, we'll get that done, eh? Okay, so all you gotta do is line it up uh, roughly sort of in the middle of where your fire is, whether it's on the ground or over some sort of other cooking device or um, like I've got all concrete tiles here so I'm sort of got this right on the edge of it and uh, just bash away. Now this sand is quite soft here so I'm having to heat it a little bit and it's not the best. I use this rubber mill, I could go get the hammer and it'd be a bit stronger. Aggie doke, hopefully that's straight. Okay, we'll grab the next part now. So these are the next two bits you want to set it up once you've driven your pole in the ground. You want this little uh, spring-loaded thing here, and you want this here. So this is actually the piece where you, uh, that fits over your pole there. You've got the hole in the bottom there. Now you've got two um, nylon or Teflon pieces in here which the uh, spindles sits on and rot rotates around. You can replace these if you ever wear them out, but they don't even look like wearing, so I'm not going to worry about it. Now this piece here goes down over the pole and this little hole here on the bottom you locate this little wire piece into there like that so that it stops this from spinning around on the pole it took me a long time to work out what that was it was actually someone else told me i forget who it was but uh yeah that just locks it in place so we'll do that now eh? and uh, put that up on the so that just clips over there Put it down to the roughly the height you want. Put this on there like that. And just spin that around and we'll locate that little bit of wire. Ellie, you're interrupting my uh, video over here. Ellie. She can hear me talking and she's uh, barking because she's as blind and deaf as a bat, but she's hearing me talking over here and having a bark. Always the way. Okay, we'll grab the next bit. So this is the spindle. So this is the spike you use for putting through your meat. And you get a couple of these as well. So these are your uh, spikes to put into your meat. Same sort of thing. They've just got a little spring loader thing. You just squeeze them together and that opens up that hole a little bit more. And you just slide those on. Now I always, when I do this, sort of roughly line this up with the machine and line this piece up with the top of your fire pit and then you get your right distance for your first one. Now if, just for this I'll put the second one on but you would put your meat on next or whatever you're cooking and then you'd jab this in as well and then you got both of those on there. Just be careful when you're pushing your meat on through here, this spike here, don't hold the sort of meat and push because if it sort of goes through all of a sudden That'll go in your hand and trust me, I've done it. That will stick into your, go through your skin. It does hurt. So um, we'll get a bit of a close up now of um, putting it onto the machine and uh, I'll move the camera over there, eh? Okay, we've got all the parts we need now. We've shown you the motor. We've got this on, got this on our um, peg. Got our um, rotisserie piece here. So all you basically got to do is poke this through there and under there and you see those two little uh, grooves in there they clip under there and over there it's as simple as that grab your motor now just tilt this up poke it into the motor line up those things again and you'll see that little l-shaped piece there it clips behind that and that holds up and all it is is a matter of turning your rotisserie on and away you go, so it's pretty easy, isn't it? So that's um, the basic rotisserie setup there. Uh, pretty simple, you just have your meat going over your fire there now. And you can raise 
and lower this you just got to move that little wire clip under there and make sure and that's that where it's hooked in there so you can spin that around there and it'll just hold that position or move it back so we'll get on to the next part now eh? okay we've shown you the rotisserie over there now we'll show you what i bought the other day so I picked up this the other day. Now this is actually a grill and it fits on that um, spindle shaft there, the same as uh, the rotisserie does. So this piece here goes to the top, the higher piece. And all you gotta do is fold out these and look at the size of that grill plate there. Like, that's about 600 long, about 350, 400 wide. And you can fold these pieces up if you don't want it that wide. You can have those folded up and you just have something that's that wide. So we'll get that onto there. I'll just sit it down there. Because also I've got a little tray as well. So you've got a little cooking tray here. Um, I'm pretty sure this is aluminium. Um, it's got little feet on that are cut out in the bottom there. So it hooks in to this grill plate. So you can put your grill plate on there and it just locks it in. If you put it at that end there, it won't slide past the end. And you can slide it up and down on that uh, grill plate. So that'll be good for just uh, cooking up a tiny little bit of veggies, you know, mushrooms, something like that, uh, just while you're, while you're cooking. So we'll get it set up now, eh? Okay, hopefully you can see me and hear me and got that good top-down view up there. So, like I said, you got your rotisserie going here, but you want to have a grill instead. I'll just turn that out of the road. Now what you can do, you got another one of these little spring things. You can put that on there. Then grab your, your grill plate. Sit it down over the shaft there. Now I just put that on upside down, first time I've put it on there. You just got to make sure the little hook piece there goes to the top. Put your shaft down. Now the reason I did that is so that that little wire pokes in between here and it just stops that from moving around. So there you go, you got your grill and you can also turn this back around here you now you could literally have that spinning below that, have this above it and the heat would still heat this up over here. Now like I said, you can have that like that, or you can fold this out. Now we'll just move that out of the road. What I might do is, we'll take that off because you can take this off altogether you didn't want to use this. Made a mess up of that, didn't I? And just put this back on there. Lower this down to whatever height you want. And then you got a terrific grill plate over your fire, whether it be on the ground, in a fire pit, or over whatever cooking device you've got. So, fantastic sort of area there. I'm gonna cook up a couple of bits of, uh, a bit of scotch fillet on there in a minute and uh, show you how that cooks up so lo really looking forward to using this i you could too though if you wanted to you could i've got two fire pits so i could set another fire pit up over here swing this around over here have a fire cooking over here put your other clip on on here Have that going there. So how good would that be? Like if you wanted to, you could have two little fires going. You could have this cooking up over here, whatever you're cooking over there, and um, no, it'd be fantastic uh, sort of outdoor setting. I, I think it's a great setup here. It'll be really great for us when we're travelling. And the good thing about this, like I said, it's so light. Um, looking forward to going away with it. So. We'll get into the cook-up now and we'll show you that 
And uh, you know, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to know anything, uh, leave me a message in the comments and um, I'll get back to you. Cheers. Okay, guys. Got me charcoal in there. It's all lit up. Took about 20 minutes just to heat up. Haven't got a lot in there. So all you got to do now, spin this grill plate over the top of it. Just get that little hook in the rough position where you want it. And uh, you can lower it down, like I said, if you think you got it not low enough. Just get it down a bit lower. Just move these little hook thing down a little bit. That's it. And get it down to the right height. So we'll just leave it there for a few minutes and uh, we'll throw the meat on, eh? Okay, I reckon that's hot enough now. I've just let it heat up for a little bit. I've got a couple of bits of um, scotch fillet here. I've put a bit of um, Pit Brothers herb and garlic salt on there and a bit of cracked pepper and that. We'll just sit that over the fire there now. We'll let them cook away for a few minutes and then we'll uh, turn them. I don't know, what's everyone reckon? Do you, do you turn once or do you keep flipping all the time? I can hear those crackling already. So there's plenty of heat getting up through there. Not a lot of charcoal in there. So I'll show you a little bit more in a minute. Tell us what you think though about the flipping the meat. I'd like to know. I only flip once. Okay, they've been cooking away for about 10 minutes yet. I haven't turned them, but while I did that, I went and got some veggies. Now I've got a bit of carrot, potato, a bit of garlic butter, some oil and uh, a bit of broccoli and cauliflower and all that. I'm going to put that in this tray here. I'm just going to let that cook away in there. Spread it all out. Now they're only little tiny pieces so shouldn't take too long to cook up and uh, I can hear that bloody frying away bloody beautiful so get a little bit of potato there trying to escape there's plenty of heat in that little dish there Should bloody be beautiful little meal. And I've got some little tin of mushrooms there. I'm gonna, I might, I've got some other ones in there. I'm gonna fry up over the fire, but uh, I'll turn these now. Look at that. Bloody beautiful. So I'll show you what it looks like when we're nearly near the finish. Okay. I reckon this is bloody just about cooked beautiful. I've only turned those twice. I can see the juices running out of them. They look bloody beautiful. Look at that. Whoa. Mushrooms look really good. Got two big mushrooms on there. And this veggies, potato, sweet potato, carrot, broccoli, cauliflower with a mushroom sauce. Looks great. So really loving this like i said if you want to swing it away get it off the coals you can just a matter of moving it around you could have the rotisserie going on another thing so great new product all i got to do now is plate it up i'll show you that and uh thanks for watching like i said if you can like and subscribe really good and uh we'll get into it okay guys all cooked have a look at this look at that how good's that? Mushroom, scotch fillet, veggies with a mushroom sauce. I'm gonna go and enjoy now before the flies eat it all. Like I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, like and subscribe if you can, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Okay, one more thing you might have been wanting to know. How did it clean up? So I've just finished the washing up. The meal was bloody brilliant. Um, bit of Steel wool, soapy water, and you can see like there's a slight bit of discoloration there, but you've got to expect that. It's stainless steel, it'll change colour. 
um, but cleaned up really good. Good thing you can rub that, rub those, and then you can fold these over, rub the other side, do the same on that one, and then you've only got to flip it over and it's nice and clean. So overall, yeah, so overall, you know, really happy with it. So thanks for watching.